Romans, uh, Ephesians 6, Romans 5, Romans 8 actually, Ephesians 6, Romans 8, and we'll start there. I want to um, have a prayer time for Brother Sterling, who is not feeling well at all, and so we are naturally concerned with him. And his health, uh, he is, now that he's not sitting here, I'll talk about him behind his back. He is a steady rock for our church and has been for many, many years. God led him uh, to move down here, 1980. Uh, he had built a house. And when I say that, I mean he built the house. And he's one of these guys that um, grew up working with his hands. And did you get him? There was an evil demon wasp that was looking mean at Alicia. And she had the courage to stamp upon it. May the God of heaven bruise Satan under your feet. But anyway, he uh, plums and does electrical work and carpentry. First time I watched him do carpentry, I was stunned. I was amazed at what he could do. And he says, I level with this eye and plumb with this eye. And I believed it. And um, so anyway, he's, all, he's our go-to guy. When we run into something we can't fix, uh, ask your dad to come over here and look at it. So, but he has been a faithful man in our church. Loves the Bible, believes it. And uh, he is very sick right now, so just pray for him. Uh, sick enough that he didn't feel like sitting here for church, and he has to be very sick in order uh, to in order to not be here. In the, all the years I've pastored, I've encountered a lot of people who decided to not attend church for far lesser things. Uh, it just seemed like church was always on the bottom of the list if there was ever a list, and um, he's never been one of those people. So. Tonight we're going to pray for him and lift him up and pray for Gloria and Lisa and Monica and uh, just lift that family up, all right? Heavenly Father, we love you and Lord, we, uh, we know we have to have the rain and uh, we don't need it now the ground is soaking wet, but what that means is all that rain is running down into the wells. And uh, you're going to save that water for when we need it come summertime. And Father, we thank you for how you take care of this earth and those who live on it. And we ask you, Father, to take care of our brother Sterling. God, that you would uh, be with him and give him comfort during this time. And, and Lord, just help him. He's in a lot of pain and he does not feel well. And... Um, I pray, dear God, that you would just uh, comfort him at this time and give him relief from all of these symptoms. And Father, if you so inclined to have a doctor find out what's wrong with him and that maybe they could aid him, give him greater comfort in some way or fix his problem, I pray, Father, you would do that. But Lord, we understand and we believe, Father, we trust you that uh, his health, his life, is in your hands, and we trust you with that. And Father, we pray, dear God, that you would give him many more years to be a blessing to his family, to be a blessing to this church. Father, we love him, and we thank you, Lord, for him. And we ask, God, that you would just give us many more men like him. Lord, just bless and bless our study of your word tonight. We thank you, Lord, for those that are gathered with us, both here and abroad. I pray, Lord, that uh, we could be a blessing to them. And, uh, Father, we are thankful 
for the blessing that many of them are to us, whether through support or prayers or just whatever, uh, helping to spread the word. We pray, God, that you would bless all of them. And we thank you for them. Lord, we just ask again, God, that you would just go with us tonight. Bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen. Ephesians chapter 6, put on the whole armor of God, and he means the whole of it, because your enemy. Um, we have every year, this time of year, wasps don't normally live through the winter. They die off, their eggs are laying somewhere dormant, and I don't know how they do all that. When springtime comes around, here they come again. But we have a, we have certain things crept in unawares. We have had a consistent problem with wasps that get in our building and they survive the wintertime. Now, they don't fly very well because the cold air. They don't move. That's why you can, you don't have to be afraid of them, Alicia, this time of year because they're not fast enough to fly up and get you, okay? Now, they can look mean, but they're, they're not actually mean. So just squash them and get rid of them. But we have, we have them in here. And we've had exterminator, we have exterminator come by all the time, check the place. We don't know where they're coming in. We don't know where their, their, their nest is. We don't know where their home is. But they have built a happy little nest in here somewhere. And we don't know how to get rid of them. The queens do live? Boy, how, how dare the queen live? But apparently these wasps don't get the memo. Okay? Because they'll be... They'll be We'll be having service. They'll be flying overhead and people dodging, running down, getting undercover, you know, and things like that. So, um, but my point is this. God designed certain creatures to be able to get in without us knowing about it. There's always going to be a principality or a power or a rule of darkness or spiritual wickedness that's going to move in somehow, some way. I have a, had a conversation with a fellow here a while back. And, um, you know, he's a new Christian, so there's a lot of things he didn't understand. But he said, I guess if I was going to be anything, I was going, I'm going to be Amish. He said, they, they're separate. They separate themselves, right? And that's what we're supposed to do. It's supposed to be separate. And I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't going to argue with him. He's young, he's a babe. And, but what I, what I would have said, had he been a little bit more mature to handle it, I would have said, they're just as big a sinner as anybody else is. Just because you don't dress the way the world dresses and just because you don't have a TV set because you don't have a plug to plug it in and just because this and just because that, that does not mean that sin cannot find a way to get in there. Back years ago, I was, I was made aware of this by way of a news article, newspaper, actually a newspaper article before the internet that talked about in many of the Amish communities in Ohio, up in Canada, a serious drug problem existed. A serious drug issue existed. And um, so they f it doesn't matter how tight you get everything, there's always going to be a way. I was watching a documentary about a Russian, one of the Russian space stations, the early space stations in the 70s, and there was two on there, and they had a serious crisis going on, but they saw something moving inside. They're floating above the earth. They saw something moving around in the air in there, and they looked, and it was a cockroach. A cockroach had made its way into that clean environment and was up in space. Okay? How it got there, but, you know, ships at sea, they always, there's always going to be a mouse on there. There's always going to be flies. There's always going to be this and that. There's always going to be a way. The devils always find a way of getting in. This is why take the whole armor of God. Don't leave anything out. But anyway, uh, that you may be able to uh, stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. 
So we, we're in the midst of talking about principalities and powers and what they are, the types of devils that they are. This, this caught my attention in the Bible, and I don't think I've ever touched on this, but I mentioned a little bit of it last uh, Sunday night, and it was just, to me, it was a real blessing. In Romans chapter 8 is where we're going to start out. What we're going to find out, if you study the, the words, principalities, powers, in verses together, you're going to see overwhelming evidence. There's a reason, if I say to you, I do not believe that Christians can be possessed by devils, I'm going to give you the verses, why I believe what I believe. They can push you, they can press you, they can bear down on you, they can hinder you, they can interrupt you, they cannot own you, they cannot do it. And uh, there, believe it or not, there are people who say they're Christians, and yet they have been taught that some of the things that they're doing is because they have a devil that needs to be cast out. And you get that devil cast out, they won't be doing that stuff anymore. And I think it's just an excuse for bad behavior. Well, I cheat on my wife because I got a devil that makes me do that. Get, I, I need this devil cast out of me. No, you need a lot. You need a whooping is what you need. You need God to take a rod to you. Okay. But anyway, here's why. Ephesians 8 verse 35. I'm not going to spend a lot of time with this because we covered it last Sunday, but this is where we're going. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Because the idea is if there's, if there's a devil sitting on the throne of your life, God is not sitting on that throne. He does not share his glory. He does not share his seat. Or his space. He does not do it. The devil is not on God's friend list. Amen. Who sh so who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation. The answer to all these is no. 17 no's on here. Shall tribulation. No. Distress. No. Persecution. No. So when it's your time to be persecuted. Keep in mind that God ultimately is going to let you come through it. Keep that in mind. You're, you're going to make it. All right? Um, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. Are, are any of these things capable of separating us from the love of God? As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him... That love us. If you are sealed, you are saved. If you are sealed and you are a son of God, then your position in Christ is guaranteed. God is not going to let you go. He's not going to fail you. He's not going to break his promises to you. He's not going to let the devil keep you. He may let the devil do to you what he did to Job. God, God loved Job as much as he loves anybody in this world. But he let Satan have a limited way in Job's life. Job didn't like any of it. But he let Job go through it. Job came through it. God restored double to him than what he ever had. Job didn't ask for that. He did not ask for that. Job didn't say, God, I'll go through this. But you better give me double at the end of it. That's not, that's not, Job didn't make any demands. He just said, I'll just, I'll just wait to die. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. You ask yourself the question, how far does the stretch and the reach of God's love go? I don't have the exact measurement but I would be inclined to say that with me, it goes a long way. I know with me, he loves me way longer than I deserve. And it's a long way. And then he said, for I'm persuaded. Now Paul is in a position now to where this is in, it's not just in his brain. It's in his heart. 
And you can't change somebody where something is written into their heart. Okay? If, um, if David Cherney were here. David works at an Apple store. Working with Apple computers, iPads, phones, Mac computers, things like that. One of the things that I know about Apple and Mac is that an Apple is not a PC and a PC is not an Apple computer. They are not, an Android is not an iPhone and an iPhone is not an Android. Y'all understand that? Okay? They're not the same thing. They're not compatible with each other. You can't run Android operating system, the program itself on an iPhone, an iPhone operating system you cannot run on an Android phone. They're not compatible one with another, okay? Now, I have absolutely no idea where I was going with that, but it, when I got there, it would have been really good. What was I thinking? Have to back that up and listen to it again. Boy, it was a good thought too, but I don't remember what I was saying. Um, for I'm persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities, hear it, nor powers. Angels, principalities, powers. Principalities and powers are angels, by the way. So they're all, this is all one group. These are devils. God's angels are not going to try to stop you from serving God. They are there to aid you while you serve God. They're there to watch over you. We cannot see how well we are really protected. Okay? I know that Apple PC thing had something to do with Job. Huh? Yeah, it will. Tonight. Midnight. For I'm persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers. So in the workings of devils against you, they cannot own you. God will not allow them to. Okay? They cannot own you. They cannot possess you. They cannot take over the faculties. I was getting it. It was in the heart. Well, but it was the difference between the, the, the mind and the heart. Oh, written. You cannot, when, when you have an Apple computer with Apple software, you cannot write PC software and make it work on an Apple computer. That's what I was thinking. When something is written in your heart, that's your core operating system, your heart. That's what your heart is what makes you do what you do. It's not your brain. Your brain controls the functions of the body, yes, but it's your heart that is why you do what you do. If a, if a person has a stone heart, they cannot be altered, they cannot be changed, they cannot be transformed by, by human reasoning. You cannot speak to them enough to, to rewrite their heart. Only God can do that. That's why some people are lost and some people are not. God is the one who either closes man's doors or opens man's doors. And that's all there is to it. Okay? Do we have a free will? Yes, we have a free will. Absolutely, we have a free will. Okay? God wrote one. God wrote one in us. Okay? But I've just, that's what I've learned about why people end up the way they end up and why they believe what they believe and why they are what they are. It's not in their brain, it's in their heart. And it's hardwired into them, and that's why they are what they are. Anyway, things present, things come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, according to this, there is no angel, no devil. Doesn't matter if they are principalities or powers. They cannot separate you from God. They cannot do it. They cannot possess you. They cannot own you. They cannot have you. They cannot 
separate you out. You are in the fold of Jesus as a sheep. And those wolves of principalities and powers cannot steal you out of that. They cannot separate you from the love of your shepherd for the sheep of God. They cannot do it. And he gave us that illustration. We're sheep for the slaughter. I mean, what, what is the shepherd keeping the sheep for, John? Yeah, that's really all they're good for. Okay, clothing and food, right? So, here we have been already accounted as dead meat. We don't belong here. We don't belong in this world. There's nothing in this world that should hold us or tie us back. Amen? We're already dead to this world and you reckon yourself as dead. Uh, I've got talked to some people that have been in the field of combat and they will tell you what keeps them from running away from the battle because bullets are flying right at you and it is your instinct to run from that danger but the good soldiers didn't run they stood and some of them died. So what is it with a good soldier that as bombs are going off, bullets are whizzing by, what is it that makes him stand his ground and try to stop the enemy? When he walks out on that battlefield, he has already decided that he's not leaving that battlefield. He's already dead here. Now, if a guy makes it through that war, when he's no longer fighting that war, it takes a while and a lot of help for him to stop thinking that way. He's got to come back to life again. And this is why we had guys in World War II, my uncle, he had some problems. He's still alive, World War II vet, Pacific. I love what he did. And he saw some things that he described to me that I'm glad I never saw. Korea, Vietnam, Gulf War. These guys saw things, but they went out there and already marked it in their mind that they're dead. So that when they, fortunately now we recognize what that is a little bit. And these guys can get some help. But when they came back from World War II and Korea and Vietnam, there were no government helps for them. So they got in drugs. They got into alcohol. They had all kinds of problems. Some of them killed themselves. Okay? But understand this. As far as us in this world, we're dead. This is how we'll make it. We're already dead. But alive to Christ and for Christ and for heaven. And we won't need a doctor to put us on heavy medications when we get to heaven to help us get over what's going on down here. We'll have a new body, new heart, new mind. We'll have it all new. Amen? So what my point is this, right here according to this, angels cannot take you over. If you are truly born again, they cannot do it. All right? Turn to 1 Corinthians 6. 1 Corinthians 6. Verse 12. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Uh, keep that in mind. When it comes to things of this world. Okay. No matter if it's tobacco, alcohol. Pharmaceuticals. Non-pharmaceuticals. Doesn't matter what it is. Okay. Meats for the belly. And the belly for meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication. But for the Lord. And the Lord for the body. And the God hath, raised, hath both raised up the Lord. And will also raise up us by his own power. 
Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. Now, in that last passage we saw we're already dead. It takes then God. We have powers then who do not have power over us because we're dead. But it takes God, verse 14, by His own power to raise us up back from the dead so that while we are living and sojourning here, which is what we're doing, this is how the Bible calls it, we are sojourning. Meaning that we have not established permanent residency here. We are on a temporary mission through this life. And when God says we're done, we're done. And he is going to call us up to be with him forever and forever. And he's doing it. Here's my point in this passage. His power is more power than their powers. If here we are counted as sheep to the slaughter and we're already dead, here, 1 Corinthians 6, we're raised back up into new life. Devils can't, and I've taught this before and I, I love it, I see it all over the Bible now. The death, the, the birth, death, rebirth. Growing up in church here, that was my birth. That was me believing what the Bible said. I left that. It died in me. God then resurrected it in me. And I'm telling you that once you're resurrected, you don't die anymore. You don't die anymore. I am not. I am not going to one day wake up and say, you know, I just don't believe the Bible anymore. I'm not going to have somebody come at me and say, no, we're going to offer you a million dollars. If you'll just go with these new versions. Not going to do it. Okay? Because I've already died to the old way and been resurrected and now death has no more power over us. 1 Corinthians 15, turn there. To say that a Christian can be possessed by... Oh, you have the flu? You have a devil of flu. The devil of... I'm not making that up. The, those devils of influenza have come in and taken over you. Can, can you let me cast them out in the name of Jesus? Can I just get some NyQuil instead? Okay. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 22. For as in Adam, all die. Are you in Adam? Yep. You're all dead. All dead. Even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order. Christ the first fruits. So Christ was the first. The resurrecting of the dead. Afterward. They that are Christ. At his coming. That's him. In the clouds. In the air. And we hear that last trump. And we're caught up with those who have died in Christ. They get to go first. That's only right. They're going to go first and we catch up to them. And we are now resurrected. Even those who didn't die, they are changed, transformed into that new life. And at Christ's coming. Then, he says in verse 24, then cometh the end. Now, if you want to write something down, just a little note. And you, you can check this out on your own and ask if it's a match. He says, then cometh the end. If you want to write down Revelation chapter 10. Verse, I'll give you the verse. To me, this is a, a cross-reference. One is referencing the other. Seven. And in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he hath declared to his servants the prophet. Actually, six and seven. There should be time no longer. Okay, time no longer. Okay, so to me, that part of verse 24 matches Revelation 10, 6 and 7. But I could be wrong, so you just kind of make up your own mind on that. Then cometh the end, 
when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and what? Power. Christ conquers all authority, all rule, and all power. All, all power. All the power that the devils have, all of their all of their magic, all of their voodoo, all of their evil ways. Verse 25, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. And if you look it up, you look it up. After the 1,000 year reign, after... Satan finally is let... Satan, I don't understand this, but this is how God does it. At the end of a thousand years, Satan's let back out. Why? I don't get it. I'll wait till I see it, then I'll go, oh! Why? But I don't understand right now. So he's going to let him back out, and he's going to go deceive the nations again. He's going to go back to Gog and Magog and gather an army again, and God's going to go, what, again? <laughs> he's going to take him, and cast him into the lake of fire. Then, death and hell is cast into the lake of fire. Because that's the last enemy. And after that, go read it. There are no more enemies. They're all gone. They're destroyed. For he must reign until he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. And I've, I've had somebody, when I, when I matched something Paul said to what John said in Revelation, I read a comment, somebody wrote, Pastor Mike, that's ridiculous. Paul wrote this before John wrote the Revelation. How could Paul have known what John was going to put in Revelation? Hmm. And I went, Holy Ghost. I don't get, I don't get that kind of thinking. Well, that was written before the book of Revelation, so therefore Paul wasn't referring to it. And I'm going, or they say, the only Bible back when this was written was the Old Testament. And I'm going, no, 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 no. Thy word is true from the beginning. The whole thing. If Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, he is the whole thing all at once. It doesn't matter when it was written. It's all true. Amen. So he, he must reign until he put up. But anyway, Christ is going to destroy, and he's going to put down all rule, all authority, and power. The United Nations has a great, big awakening coming one day. The United Nations, as an entity, I'm going to wax conspiratorial for a minute, but the United Nations, as an entity, seeks to do, through man's efforts, what only Christ can do. See, the United Nations uses portions of Old Testament prophecies as their goal, where all the swords are beat into plowshares. That's their goal. The goal of the United Nations is to end all war everywhere. How do they plan on doing that? Because people hate other people that's been going on since Cain and Abel and nothing can change the heart of man in that manner there there can be there is not enough laws that they can enforce that would stop men from hating other men and thus wanting to go to war with them nothing so to me the United Nations is an anti-Christ entity in that it seeks to replace what only Jesus can do. Does that make sense? The United Nations seeks to put down all rule and all authority and all power. The United Nations sees itself as overruling even the authority of our Constitution. Because now that we have a treaty with the United Nations, and if the United Nations Security Council or whatever council votes a certain way, that's law now, and it overrides the Constitution. And that's a shame. 
And Donald Trump is not, he's wrong on some things, like his lifestyle, but he's not wrong in wanting to pull out of the United Nations. He's not wrong. Because they seek to do what only Christ can do. And that is, only Christ can put down all power, all rule, and all authority. Only he can. So if you are weaponless and armorless, they will own you. The principalities and the powers, they'll own you. And you can't stop them. So go back to what I said this morning. What makes them scatter is a trumpet. Some people don't have a trumpet. Let's give them a trumpet. Amen? Ephesians chapter 1. Turn there. Verse 18. Let's go back 17 because that's actually if I'm going to look for the beginning of the sentence, I have to go all the way back to 15. Melissa? No, this Melissa. One of these days, I'm going to have you sit down. I'm going to have you make your students to give an, an outline of Ephesians 1, 13 through 23. Because it's all one sentence. Do a, do a grammar... Vocabulary outline. You know what I'm talking about, right? Huh? Diagram. Yeah, that's what I mean. Diagram. Uh, I had Miss Mears. You remember her? She, she, she said that when she was in college, that was one of their... They had to diagram a verse from the Apostle... A sentence from the Apostle Paul. His sentences run 10 verses. Some, and in this case... It starts in verse 13 and does not end until 23. Commas and colons and semicolons don't apply. But anyway, let's pick it up in verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. You want enlightenment? Read your Bible. The whole, God is light. Amen. God will give you enlightenment. He'll, you'll see things you never saw before. That you may know... How would you like to know beyond any doubt? Hey, everybody listen. Young people, listen. How would you like to know beyond any doubt that if you died tonight, you're going to heaven? You can know that. They don't allow Catholics to know that. They don't allow other people in other religions to know that. But God says you can know it. You may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. See, I'm forming my speech, so I'm giving you comm uh, commas instead of periods. He's not done with his thought. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion, four things, far above them. God has set you far above these things, meaning they cannot rule over you again Amen. cannot do it and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and have put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is his body the fullness of him that filleth all in all paul what what was the what's the main verb of this whole sentence from 13 to 23 good luck finding it but in all this he said he wants your eyes to be opened to the fact 
that that which used to own you cannot own you anymore. They, can, they will mess with you. They will suggest to you. They will push you. They will try to force you. But they cannot be above you ever again. God's put them down. He put them under his feet. Okay? At Calvary, what was under Jesus' feet? Huh? Calvary. Golgotha. The skull. A skull? You know what's... If you were to take a wild guess at what a skull is a symbol of, give me your thoughts on it. Death. Skull is death. Okay? They celebrate the Day of the Dead down in Mexico, and they adorn themselves with skulls. They, and that's what, they, that's what it means. Universally, a skull is death. And what's under Jesus' feet at Golgotha? The symbol of death. Amen. It's under his feet. Even, listen to this, the people here that have died, they're not dead. They're not dead. None of them are. According to the Bible, they're more alive than we are. That kind of life that they're living now is the one that I hope for. And long for. But not the one that I have yet. Ephesians 3. Ephesians 3. I'll, I'll have to stop here. Verse 9. To make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. All of us are joined together. We are in fellowship. Of the mystery. But the mystery is not a mystery to us anymore. We know what it is. And if you want to know what it is, just read your Bible, look for the word mystery. You'll, you'll see it. Every place it's mentioned, the word mystery, you'll see what it is. So we're in fellowship, fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God. Who, that's why you couldn't see it. Nobody can see God, you can't see the mystery. Who created all things by Jesus Christ. To the intent that now... I like this one. That now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Stop and think about this. The angels are the beings that can be in the presence of God. We know from the book of Job twice all of the sons of God gathered together. Even Satan showed up. And God said, Satan, where you been? He said, I've been wandering to and fro. Okay? So, and the Bible says of Satan, Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There's no secret that is hid from thee. And yet, he doesn't know the mystery. He doesn't know it. He doesn't know what it is. And he is in the presence of God. And God hid it. And none of the angels knew it. How are the angels, according to this passage, how do the angels find out what God's plan is? The church. Look at that. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church, the manifold wisdom of God. Where did God hide it? In us. And when it is revealed, it will be revealed by the church. The church who God made lower than the angels. And Satan hates us for that. He thinks that we're beneath him. And we are, technically. We created a lower species. Okay? 
nobody here, if, if you saw a dog run out in front of you while you're driving, would you do everything reasonably to try not to hit that dog? If an ant ran out in the road, Right? If a wasp was clinging to life on the floor back here, Alicia, would you let him live or stump him? That was somebody's baby. What about a puppy? If a puppy was back here looking at you, wagging its tail, would you stomp his head in the ground? No. See, we, even in our mind, we kind of regard some life forms as higher than others, right? We're made lower than the angels. We're a lower, lesser species than they are, according to them. But then God took his greatest mystery and hid it in us. And the devils are looking everywhere for it, and they can't see it because they won't look at us. They, it's like God surely wouldn't put it there. That's, exact, that's the place that he put it. And God is going to, he's going to take the church one of these days and he's going to glorify them in the presence of all the world and of all the, all the angels, both good and bad. And God's going to say to all of them, this is your new boss. Because that's what the Bible says, we're going to be judging angels, right? Here's your new boss. And they're not going to like that. According to, so why would they try to get into you? That reason. It's a good reason. But they can't. They can't. Okay? So, verse 11, this is according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. This was an eternal purpose. This was, God does not figure things out as time goes on. We do. God doesn't. God had this purpose eternally. Before the world was, God had all of this purposed for His glory and His honor. And for a wife, for His son. Isn't it beautiful? And I love this. I love this teaching. I love this, this thought of the glorification of the church being far above all principality and power. They can't own us. That's why they're going to try every day. Just remember they can't. Let's stand to our feet. It's been a joy being in the Word tonight. Amen? Been a joy being in the Word. Pray for one another. Pray for the direction and the thing that I believe God may have laid on my heart. Pray about that. Okay? And I'm, I'm not telling... So I'm looking for a witness. I'm looking for someone to be praying about it and God laying on their heart to come say, hey, pastor, have you ever thought about doing this? That's kind of what, that's my fleece, okay? So just pray about that and uh, pray, again, pray for Brother Sterling and uh, be careful going home. The temperature is going down, all right? Father in heaven, it's, a, it's been a joy tonight to be in your word. I love you, Father. I love you. For what you have made me into now, but I'm not anywhere near what I want to be. And I understand, God, that I am not anywhere near what I'm going to be. But Father, I thank you, God, for what I am now. And I pray, Heavenly Father, God, that you would always continue to work in me. And please don't ever stop. 
Don't ever change your mind. Please, God, don't ever give up on me. And I just ask for your help every day. And I thank you, God, that you have made, when you saved us, you made us safe in many ways. And there's a lot of devils out there, and they hate us. They hate us because of who we are and what we represent, and not what we do, but just who we are. And I pray, Heavenly Father, God, that you would always, always instill in our hearts the victory that we have over principalities and powers. And they may hurt us, and God, you'll let them every now and then. They may take away from us, and you'll let them every now and then. But they cannot have us. Father, even if the one who has power over death... takes the body of someone that we love, we know, God, that they did not and cannot take his soul. Father, Lord, just give us more wisdom every day. Give us more understanding every day. Help us to see in the word every day the victory that we have. Bless your word tonight. Somebody needed it. I pray, God, it be a blessing to them. We pray this in Jesus' name and all of God's people said. Amen. Amen. Be careful going home.